Hey guys, my name is Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I'm working on a Lenovo IdeaPad 3, the 15 inch version. I'm gonna take you on a teardown and disassembly tour, show you how to open it up and the various major components you can access once you do. So first thing guys, power down the computer the correct way, make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then gonna flip your computer over to access your bottom case screws. Now you have these four screws along the bottom edge here, these three along the middle, and these three along the top. Once you get those screws out, you're gonna take your small, flat, preferably plastic pry tool. I say plastic because metal tends to scratch your cases much more than plastic ones. So take your small, flat, plastic pry tool and go across this seam all the way around to gently but firmly pry up your bottom case from the rest of your computer. Be careful not to put your pry tool too far in. You could damage things inside the computer. Just keep it on the edge and go nice and slow. If you get stuck in a spot, stop and continue in the other direction. Once you get your bottom case off, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now, as a side note, guys, to your computer repair project, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, I have it sitting on an anti-static mat. Either a mat or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to help you limit the chances of damaging anything in your computer when working on them. If you need help with any tools or supplies for your computer repair, there'll be a link above, also below in the description. It'll be a list of things that I use in my shop. So here's your battery right here on the bottom right corner. If you wanna remove it, you have these three screws here. You have two on the left, one on the right, and then the battery plugs into the motherboard right there. Because there's not a lot of slack in this line, I had to remove the battery and then use it to pull out of that port there. Even though I always say to not pull from the wires, if you can help it, there's really no other way to pull that out. It's, it's really kind of hard. So I had to pull it out from the wires. For those of you who want battery specs, this is a 35 watt hour Lenovo battery. They do have an optional upgrade to a 45 watt hour battery for this though, just so you know. The model number for this battery, in case you're looking for a replacement, is L16L2PB3. This is a 7.6 volt battery. As another side note, guys, all the replacement parts, all the upgrade parts that I'm gonna show you in this model computer, they will also be in that link below, the link that has all the tools and supplies you need. It'll also have all the replacement and upgrade parts that I'm gonna show you. Okay, so now that the battery has been removed or at least unplugged, we're safer to proceed deeper into the computer now. The next thing I'll shout out is your RAM right here. The RAM is usually held in this way. There's a spring-loaded metal arm on either side. The way to get your RAM out is you gently pry those arms apart from each other, away from the RAM stick. The RAM stick will then release. It'll pop up a little bit usually, and you can slide it out of this port. To slide it back into the port, there's a long end here and a short end here. So you can only plug that RAM in one way. So you don't have to worry about plugging it in incorrectly. And then once you get it plugged in nice and flush, you just press down in the center. Those spring-loaded arms will snap onto it and secure it in place. To give you some RAM information, this computer has four gigabytes of RAM already integrated into the motherboard um, to use in, in the computer. When I opened this up, there was an eight gigabyte stick in there. So your max RAM is 20 gigabytes. So you could have max another 16 gigabyte stick in there, giving you a max of, of 20. And again, I'll have RAM upgrade suggestions in that link below in the description. The next thing I'll shout out is this solid state drive port, the M.2 port right here. After you remove this thermal tape, there's a small 42 millimeter solid state drive there plugged into the M.2 port with a single screw right here in the middle to release that drive and then you can slide it out of this port by pulling it to the left. As you can see, there's a screw hole here, which allows you to take a 80 millimeter solid state drive and, and plug it in here if you wanted some upgrades. And again, those will be in the link below in the description, some upgrade suggestions. The next thing I'll shout out is your Wi-Fi card right here. That's plugged into a port right there, it looks a little similar to the solid state drive port, and it's held in by a single screw, same way, right there. After you undo that screw, this can slide to the left out of the port. And these are the antenna wire, this black and gray wire. They run down here alongside the fan and up through this hinge assembly. So these are just snaps, they're not plugs, they just snap right off 
of your Wi-Fi card and they can snap back onto it after. The next thing I'll shout out are your speakers down here. You'll see this smaller speaker on the right of my screen. The wires run across here, connect to this longer speaker, and then this speaker plugs into right here. So just like with any cords in a computer, try not to pull on the cords if you can help it, just manipulate the plug. So this plug has a grip on either side. You can use your fingernails or a pry tool and just pull that plug right out of its port right there to replace those speakers. The next thing I'll shout out is your CMOS battery over here near the right. This battery, for those of you who are looking to replace it, this is just held down by double-sided tape. So that will snap off very easily. And the black and red wires come here, plug into the motherboard right there, a little similar to your speaker wires. You can use your fingernails or a pry tool on either side of that plug to get that out. For those of you looking to access this battery to reset your BIOS, you don't have to physically remove it. You can leave the battery there. You would just unplug it for 15, 20 seconds, and that should be sufficient to reset your BIOS settings. The next large component I'll shout out is your heatsink assembly right up here over your CPU. Heatsink comes to the vent and connects to the fan right here. To access your fan, you have three screws, one here, one here and one here. But keep in mind before removing your fan, these antenna wire are run through it right down here. So if you're accessing your fan, it may be a good idea to snap these off of your Wi-Fi card, unrun them through the fan before taking your fan out. You can then blow it out, vacuum it out, clean it out, replace it, whatever, whatever you're looking to do. The heat sink then runs down here over your CPU and is connected with these four screws over the CPU right here. After removing those screws, your heat sink will come up. As a side note, if you are here to reapply thermal paste, there will be a video link up top. Also below in the description, it'll be a quick tutorial video on how to reapply thermal paste after cleaning the old stuff off. You definitely want to clean off the old thermal paste and not put new stuff on top of the old stuff. And then when you reapply thermal paste, you don't want to put too much. So it'll be a quick tutorial for those of you that need that. The other smaller components you may need to access are this USB board right here. It's held down by a screw. You can take that USB board out. These are your touchpad ribbon cables right there. This is your uh, keyboard ribbon cable right there. Your LCD cable is plugged in right up here toward the top. That comes in from this hinge assembly. The LCD cable plugs in right there. And just a shout out, I should have probably mentioned this when I was talking about your solid state drive, the other the other storage device. But this right here, as you can probably guess, this is a port for a hard drive or a solid state drive right here. Um, the SATA 2.5 inch drives can fit right in there. You would need to buy a SATA connection with a ribbon cable and that ribbon cable would plug in right here, right to the left of your touchpad cable. But that is an option for those of you that want additional storage. You can have a SATA 2.5 inch storage device there. So that's the video guys. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, check out the FAQs below in the description. It could save you some time getting an answer. If you do need to leave me a question or comment, please do. I do try to get to those a couple times a day at least. To support the channel, please remember to like and share. Subscribe if you enjoy this type of DIY tutorials. And for those of you that want to support the channel a little further, you can always leave a small donation. And there's a couple ways to do that. First, right below the video to the right hand side, you'll see the super thanks button. You can click on that. You can select a tip amount here. Second way, you can use your cash app. Find me at dollar sign PC helper. You can leave a dollar amount and you can even leave a little note. So thank you so much for watching guys and I look forward to seeing you on my next video.